All right, it's raining, Thor. Come on. Oh, my God. Do it. Don't. Come on. Prove it. work. Prove it. What the? Oh, my God. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. So I wanted to talk a little bit more about this Black Myth Wukong controversy because there's something I didn't really talk too much about in the previous video was the fact that it may not actually be true. So Rebecca Valentine herself uh, made these dismissive tweets saying, hmm, checks notes. Some random Chinese blogger made these charges of extortion against us. My thing is this, whether or not it's true kind of doesn't matter because everything around it all the other elements actually are true to an extent. Now, misinformation is bad. Lies are bad. But <laughs> the thing about this extortion story is probably only an issue of degrees and of kind in the sense that, okay, so say some random Chinese guy and they say it like, oh, he's Chinese. You can't trust him. You know how they are. But say this guy is some random tech blogger who made this up. The fact that it makes so much sense. That it's not unreasonable. This is not being part of a circle jerk or an echo chamber. Sweet Baby Inc. employees have said this themselves. Kim Blair herself has said that if you want us to work at your studio and your studio chiefs and bosses say we don't need it, go to the marketing, <laughs> go to the marketing team and terrify them into hiring us. Because she, when she says to give them what you want, what that person wants that she's advising is for them to work at their company. And the fact that whether or not the hit piece that uh, IGN put out against them was coordinated consciously with Sweet Baby Inc. doesn't matter. Because maybe it wasn't. Maybe to me, when I did the video on that article when it came out, my whole point was they do this all the time. They did this to Ghost of Tsushima. They do this whenever it's an Asian game, uh, Eastern game whether or not it's made by people in the West. Because with Ghost of Tsushima, they attacked it first for being cultural appropriation. But it got so popular, and even Japan was like, yeah, this is great. You respect our culture. We appreciate this tribute to us and our island of Tsushima and all this stuff. So then they couldn't keep saying, it's cultural appropriation because the Japanese players loved it. So then they switched it and was like, well, Japanese are Nazis anyway, so... <laughs> So then they switched it around. They still found a way to attack Ghost of Tsushima. And the main thing about Ghost of Tsushima, as far as I'm concerned, why they kept attacking it was because gamers found that as the perfect alternative to The Last of Us Part 2. They was orgasming and shitting and coming on themselves over The Last of Us Part 2. Gamers were mad at that game. So they said, let's play Ghost of Tsushima. Hey, look, this game is great. It's exciting. Gives you choice, all this stuff. So then they got mad and they attacked it. But there was some people trying to put out articles about how they loved seeing Jin's ass. And Jin, to me, I love the character, but it was like a stockbroker. <laughs> I wish he looked a little bit more badass than that. But the par character is badass. But I just always felt like he kind of looked like Yong Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, not to get into that too much. My thing is just basically when I saw this uh, hit piece against Black Myth Wukong, which now, of course, they're now referring to as the monkey game. These Journals always do this. They did this with Hogwarts Legacy, the wizard game. So now Black Myth Wukong, because of the people now talking about this extortion story and the fact that IGN did this hit piece, now they're going to refer to Black Myth Wukong as the monkey game. But anyway, so they put out this hit piece. Whether or not they actively worked with a Sweet Baby Inc. to do it or any of the other DEI groups, they still were trying to hurt Black Myth Wukong. And if you read the article and see the what they used, because the whole thing was supposed to be about uh, sexism and misogyny at the studio, game science, and in the Chinese tech industry overall. So you see these silly statements, things that they just found vulgar and offensive, which is fine. You could be offended. You could find these comments vulgar. But to pretend that it's misogyny or sexism just because women get offended, whatever woman saw it got offended and complained about it, then all of a sudden it's misogyny. And then come to find out a lot of those uh, quotes that were being attributed to the people at Game Science were mistranslated. 
This is the most retarded article I've ever read in my life. Context. IGN published an article trying to smear the company and the devs behind Black Myth Wukong as some sexist freaks because of some of their employees' social media posts. The article cites one of their artists who basically did the still wood meme about this monster. The problem is that this game journalist, either by sheer incompetence or malice, completely mistranslated all of these posts and added words to them in the most uncharitable way possible. And this is nothing compared to the most egregious mis translation after one of the game company founders posted this in 2020, apologizing for the lackluster trailer of Black Myth Wukong just released. Now how on earth do you get? I want to expand my circle and hire more people. Get licked until I can't get an erection. In reality, the actual translation completely changes the meaning of what he was saying. Not satisfied, I went back checking if anyone called this out when it happened, and they did. So yeah, it's not at all Hard to believe that Sweet Baby Anchor somebody swooped in after this article came out. Because like I said, it doesn't matter if Rebecca Valentine talked to somebody at Sweet Baby Inc. or wherever and said, I'm going to write this hit piece. You use this hit piece to talk to game science. It's perfectly reasonable to assume that if they didn't do that, all you have to do is look at that hit piece, see how they've characterized and framed game science. If you're an opportunistic uh, DEI group, yeah, you're going to go to game science to say, hey, look, we see these articles because it wasn't just IGN. The gamer did one or two, I think. And you say, look, you've got this bad press. You've got this bad image. We can help you clean up your image. And they didn't even have to do it in this threatening way. They didn't have to say, hey, look, we did this, right? We made sure IGN, the gamer, whoever else wrote these articles about you. And if you want us to stop, pay us $7 million. And they could have just said, hey, look, we see what's happening we understand that you're in China and things are different there. But if you're bringing your game to the West, if you're having your journey to the West, let us help you and pay us $7 million. <laughs> Now, my thing is, I kept saying yen in my other video about this. It should be yuan. So maybe they said 7 million yuan. That's about a million dollars. That's almost a million dollars, I think. A million sounds a little bit more reasonable, even though I don't think any of these groups are worth it because they're tanking companies with this DEI stuff. But if you're a consulting group and you say, yeah, we're about a couple hundred thousand to a million based on the size of your game and the budget and whatever, what you, what we need to do for you, then about a million sounds, I guess, reasonable enough if you accept their input. My thing is, <laughs> I could absolutely see that happening. So whether or not it's just this random Chinese tech guy, I don't see him just pulling this out of his ass. I can literally see him talking to people, having connections with people at game science who would tell him things like that off the record, not official. Because the difference between, say, these dev companies, a lot of these guys at these studios in, say, journos and Western devs is how professional they are versus how unprofessional um, these journals are here. Like you look at how they all circle the wagon. Pretty much every single one of them um, have pronouns in their bio and they're all circling and wagging around Rebecca Valentine as if she's being harmed in some way because people are bringing up the fact that she wrote this hit piece. In the damn article, they mistranslated statements that people said in order to make them look worse. And you got people, colleagues of hers saying how she should be working for the Washington Post and that she's bigger than the gaming industry. This terrible hack of a writer to show you the lack of professionalism, the lack of integrity that these people have. I absolutely believe whoever this tech blogger is in China, I think his name is Tiger. I don't even know, but I truly do believe that he talked to people at Game Science who did tell him that, look, because you can't be unaware in this day and age that IGN has put out this huge article accusing you of sexism and misogyny. You're working with them. You're giving them game footage and demos and stuff to a preview on their website. And you think they're not aware at the same time that they're doing that, that they're also being called misogynists and sexists. They got to get the word out. And I guess they're looking at it. You know, this is a big Western gaming website. We need to work with them. So we'll promote our game and we'll just trust that the gamer will just look at that and not care too much about what's going on with these hit pieces against them. And like I said, they're going to be more professional, even though you got your boy Fang G making these vulgar comments or whatever. Still, they're going to be professional in the sense that they're not going to say, fuck IGN. If they did. That would be absolutely based and they would get even more sales. <laughs> but I don't expect them to do things like that. I just think it's funny overall that to me, in a holistic sense, it doesn't even matter if the extortion story is 
100% true because the gaming press has created this environment where you literally can't trust any of them. I don't care if it's Jason Schreier or Alyssa Mercante or Rebecca Valentine or Kihu Chan. None of them. You can't trust any of them. They care about agenda. That's all they care about. They see the gamer as their enemy. So to me, whether or not the actual story is true, I do think it's true. But whether or not it is true, we're all aware of how journos and these DEI consultancy groups move in this space. We know that they're trying to strong arm these Asian companies into complying with their Western standards, this fake modern audience that they've created, their circle jerk of colleagues and friends and allies. So even if the details of this extortion story isn't correct, it's probably only a difference in degree and kind. So maybe it's not $7 million, but they probably did go to them. One of these groups probably did go to Game Science and say, hey, pay us a certain amount and we'll take care of you. We'll, we'll improve your image. We'll give you our stamp of approval. I, I wouldn't be surprised at that at all. I believe something like that probably did happen. And also just this this idea that it's a conspiracy amongst, you know, Sweet Baby Inc. and IG and that kind of thing, where I don't think the way, since they all think they're alike, they're all like of this cult. They say that about anti-woke people. But the woke, you absolutely know what's going to happen. Like, you know what they're going to complain about in a game or a movie or a comic or whatever. They don't have to have an actual meeting in a room, even though they do have Discord groups where they all get together and talk and share information. Like that nonsense with the hard R controversy in uh, Stellar Blade. They do get together and do things like that. So it's absolutely reasonable to believe some version of this extortion story is true. And it doesn't have to be like, it doesn't matter if they, Valentine and Kihu Chan went directly to Sweet Baby Inc. and said, hey, we're going to write this article. You shake them down for $7 million after we do it. Because they all think that what they're doing is right and just. So all they have to do is write this article accusing this company um, of sexism, misogyny, because they're being vulgar and crude and just acting like regular guys. And then Sweet Baby Inc. or Black Girl Gamers or somebody can swoop in behind them and try to capitalize on what was done. So I firmly believe something of that story is true. And it doesn't really matter if it's exactly how it was presented, because the overall spirit of what's going on in gaming is Western journos are trying to strong arm all companies, Eastern or otherwise, to follow their agenda. Sweet Baby Inc. and companies like them are trying to capitalize on their agenda by also forcing them, <laughs> forcing these companies to follow an agenda. And the two groups are all in, in fighting against gamers who don't want their presence and their input ruining our fun and our hobby.